Hello everyone and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. My name is Jane, my husband Michael is behind the camera. We are early retirees, debt and mortgage free in our mid 50s and every Wednesday we open our home to everyone. So come on in and have a midweek money chat with us. Now this week our midweek money chat is about a beginner's guide to frugal living. Don't sign off thinking, well, I'm not a beginner, because <laughs> I'm sure you may know more than I do. Nonetheless, today is all about those frugal things that anyone and everyone can do if they choose, and any one of these will save you a lot of money. I always like to start off by being reflective and when we're reflective and think about what does frugality actually mean it's all about being purposeful with our money us deciding what we are going to do with our money it isn't always about trying to find the cheapest it's not trying to find the way to live a parsimonious life or an unhappy life in any way it is about making the choices that we want within the budget that we've got and still being able to save so let's get into these seven tips, these seven ways of how to save so much more money with this wonderful thing called frugality. We've got to start with the obvious, haven't we? The basis of frugal living, the absolute bedrock of frugal living, the non-negotiable of frugal living is living off a written budget. Now those of us in the past, and I was one of these people who really didn't understand budgeting, is because we didn't, Mike and I admit to this, we didn't budget for absolutely everything that's going to happen in the year and also that might happen in the year. So you're going to budget for a car service but you also have to budget for the fact the car might break down and might need repairing. So that is an example. So if we go through living off a written budget, obviously the first line on our written budget is going to be our savings. We always say save 10% of your income. It might think, wow, that's a lot, but after a while you will get used to it and it will become your normal. Then having your sinking funds or your savings pots for everything that's going to need to be paid throughout the year, whether it's your income tax, whether it's your taxes on your home, taxes on your land, the school uniform, the school shoes, Christmas birthdays, car repairs, holidays, all of those things that are gonna happen over the year. And then you need a line on your budget that says discretionary spending. And that is where you allow yourself things like if you want to go out and eat, if you want to, just buy something spontaneously. But if that is the amount that you've put in your discretionary budget, that is the amount you stick to. Now, this might be new for some of you hearing this today, and this might be something that you have really good intentions to do, but don't do. And it's that written budget isn't worth the paper it's written on if you don't stick to it. And you means it means as a frugal living person, somebody who practices frugality, that you will sit down and look at that budget on a very regular basis and hold yourself accountable by tracking your spending and making sure that you're not going over budget. So there's the first one, frugal living, live off a written budget. Number two is reduce waste. Now whenever we think of reducing waste we always think of reducing food waste but there's so many other things that people waste and I've wasted these in the past myself. Here's an example, buying clothes that you don't wear. That's a waste. It's a waste of the clothes and it's a waste of the money. So I always advise people wear all the clothes you've got, don't save them for best, wear them. Wear your best t-shirt, wear your best jeans, wear your best shoes, wear them all the time. Waste of money might be heating rooms that you don't use, I'm putting a caveat in here. If you live somewhere where it's precarious, 
and the temperatures are so drastic that you need to heat your house, you've got to do what you've got to do. But there are plenty of people who live in places like where I live or where I lived in the UK, you didn't need to do that and you therefore didn't need to heat rooms that you didn't use. Don't leave lights on, don't leave taps running, don't have drafts, don't have uninsulated lofts, so you're wasting heat. Don't make unnecessary journeys in your car. All of those things are wasting, aren't they? There are great ways to save water, we all, all of us need to save on energy costs. Don't, don't leave the oven on when there's nothing in it. Take, if you take a six minute shower, take a five minute shower. If you take a 10 minute shower, take an eight minute shower. Saving on water. We do something that some people, or lots of people do this. When they run their shower, you get almost a bucket full of water through which is cold before the hot water comes through. Just save that water, that water, and use it to flush your loo later on in the day. There are so many ways that you can stop waste, and all of that is your money dripping out all over the place, isn't it? So, the backbone of frugal living, don't waste. My third section is called frugal food. And I'm going to start with the obvious. The more you are eating out, the more money you're spending. So the less you eat out, the less money you spend. And frugal people might eat out for special occasions, but most of the time they cook and eat everything at home. I'm going to have to refer to my notes here because I've got a huge load of things here to do. First of all is obviously meal planning. Stock checking, eating up what you've got first, putting what you've got in your kitchen first into your meal plan. The next one is being really organised about your food shopping, making sure that you've bought everything. So meal plan, three meals a day, meal plan, packed lunches, meal plan, absolutely everything. And if you possibly can, shop once a week. Because lots of people will have a budget for food and then they'll forget things or they fancy a bit of something else or just going out for some chocolate or I'm just going to go out and get a few beers or some wine or some snacks. And that wasn't on their food budget and they're spending money on that. Often if you ask people where their money has gone and you look through their bank statements, they've eaten it. They have absolutely eaten it. The great thing to do, and Mike and I have done this for years and years and years, is we always took our lunch to work. We always took a jar of instant coffee and we took in a little flask of milk each day just to make our coffee. Now, I know this is a trend now to going out and buying coffee, but to be honest with you, you know, if you want to know where people's money is going, quite often, not only have they eaten it, but they've drunk it. You know, you know, why are people short of money? Because their coffee is too nice. There really is a, a better way to do this. Make your coffee at home if you like real coffee. Put it in a flask, take it with you. If you're gonna go out on a day trip, if you're going to go somewhere for the day, pack your own food up, take it with you. Mike and I have been on holidays. We have rented self-catering accommodation. I have batch cooked before I went. I have put it in a freezer box with duct tape around it to seal it. I have taken it there, I have taken it out, I have put it in the freezer when I have arrived and I have reheated those main meals for each day and then when we've gone out for the day I have taken packed lunches. So we've even been frugal with food on holiday. Of course once in a while we've treated ourselves to a meal in a restaurant when we're on holiday but most of the time that wasn't really within our budget. I'm looking at more tips and hints for you here. Obviously batch, cook and freeze. Especially if you have a really busy life and you get tired, and let's face it, that's all of us. Just having a beef stew in the freezer, just having a cottage pie, or something that you've made previously in the freezer. Batch cooking, if you've got children or teenagers with hollow legs, get a tin of homemade muffins. 
a box full of homemade flapjacks. Just having that, they really take minutes to make. And just having those there. If you're one of those people who really just keeps hitting up those takeaways, delete the apps. They're there and they're luring you, delete those apps. Be smarter with your shopping, with your food. Know when the supermarket has its reductions and when it has its sales. We don't use the leaflets. We have, please don't put publicity through our letterbox on our letterbox, but we do look at it online. I know the supermarkets I'm going to go to. I know the days that they have their offers on. And if they're really good offers, so if there's a very good offer on meat or fish or vegetables, I get in there early. I know when they have their orange stickers or their yellow stickers or they reduce those prices. And I'm organized about that. I know when Lidl have their one euro boxes. I know when the Intermarsh has its 150 euro boxes. I get in there. I make sure I get organized. I know the supermarkets that sell the big bags of bread and I can freeze them. But being savvy about food, because next to your mortgage and your energy bills, food is up there. It's a huge bill. The more sensible that you can be about that, the more organized that you can be about that, you will really save a massive amount of money. And sometimes I think, is it frugality or is it just good old common sense? You choose. My next section in the beginner's guide to frugal living, I'm gonna call the joy of waiting. Now, if you are one of those people who is a see it, want it, buy it straight away person, to make a change is gonna be hard for you and I get that. It's, it's not easy to make a change for anybody at all. But I do want to explain to you that there's a huge amount of pleasure in having a line in your budget for savings and then waiting until you've saved something. And I'm gonna give you an example. We have a wood burning cooker in our kitchen. It heats the kitchen and we can also cook with it. Now, when we moved in here, we didn't have the budget for that. We just went out and bought a 100 euro, 30 year old, second hand wood burning cooker. And we used it for two years. And in that two years, I think we repaired it twice. Another example is, we wanted a ride-on lawnmower, and for quite a while, we couldn't afford one. So we were out there pushing a lawnmower up and down for a couple of years until we could afford to save for it. I can see the joy on my husband's face when he's riding around on his lawnmower now that we've saved it. And I can tell you, I love my wood-burning cooker, and it did take us a while to save for it. And I'm sorry if I'm looking at my notes here, but there are ways of helping yourselves to get over there. If you're always looking on Amazon, you're always looking on sales websites, maybe it might be best if you need to, to delete those apps. If you're somebody who every time you browse and go around a shop and looking at things, maybe it's best that you avoid that for a while until you save up for things. Another one is that is get used to the fact that some things take many years to save for. It's quite acceptable to take five years to save up for a car. It might take you 10 years to save up for your first one, five years to save up for the next one because you, you trade it in. But it is a really good thing. And I'm gonna use the example of a handbag that I've got. I bought a really lovely leather handbag, purse, Americans call that, a handbag, in 2012. And I've many times thought I'll save up for a new handbag. And do you know what? When I've actually reached my savings target, I've reflected on it. So it's the six, the seven months have gone by. And you know what? That desire to have a new handbag has passed. And that's another part of the joy of delayed gratification, the joy of delayed spending and the joy of waiting. It's a great part of frugal living that once you get used to it, it really is a good thing. And so when you have saved for something and you do eventually get it, oh my, do you enjoy it. My next 
section in Beginner's Guide to Frugal Living is all about savvy shopping. Because as a frugal person, you are definitely a savvy shopper. Well, first of all, you've delayed your, you've delayed your purchase. And one of the reasons that you've delayed your purchase, for example, if you're going to buy a car and you're going to save up for a car, and it's gonna take you years and years. When you actually get to the point, if you're coming up to the point of buying a new car, it's probably gonna take you months and months and months to actually buy it. Because you're gonna do your research. Is it gonna last? How much is it gonna cost me to service this car? How much is it gonna cost me to put tires on this car? We've done this in the past. We bought a really nice car and it needed low profile tires. We won't make that mistake ever again. We won't make buy a car in the future that has expensive parts to buy. It's all very well buying a secondhand Volvo, but then the parts are expensive. So we always go for an absolute bulk standard car now from now onwards. But everything, it doesn't matter if we're renewing our healthcare insurance or uh, anything in the house. If it's a sofa, we have completely done our research on it. Can you buy new covers for that model of sofa? Is that model of sofa going to be around for years and years to come? If it's adhesive for tiles for the bathroom, we're gonna research that. Is this a really good adhesive for the tiles? Is it gonna keep the tiles on the walls for the next 10 years? So whatever it is, as a frugal person who lives a frugal life, or if you're going to change to living this way, you are going to do your research. And every time before you buy something, you're gonna ask a whole series of questions. Do I need it? Do I need it now? Can I wait? Can I make do with something else that I've already got? A coat would be an example, you might think to yourself, do I need a coat? Well, can I wear this other coat that I've had a while? I'm not too keen on it, but will that coat do until I've bought a new coat? I'm just thinking about other things that we need to do. You're asking those questions. Will I get good value from this? Will I wear this, use it? Will I keep it? So. As a savvy shopper, you're going to do a lot of research and you're going to ask a lot of questions. And then, of course, you're going to delay that purchase because you're going to save up for it. My next section I'm going to call Don't Upgrade, and it's all about avoiding lifestyle creep. Now, lifestyle creep is where you get a better job and you earn more money, you suddenly start spending more money. And you are no better off than you were before. So you suddenly start earning 50,000 a year and you're spending 50,000 a year. You are no better off than when you were earning 30,000 a year and spending 30,000 a year. You are only better off when you do not upgrade and you do not succumb to lifestyle creep. We have in the past, we ran up debts, we had too fancy a car, we had too nice a house, our clothes were too good, our food was too fancy, and we had to drastically change that, pay it off and avoid lifestyle creep. So don't upgrade. People who are really sensible about this, they buy that three bedroom house with one toilet downstairs. I think Americans call that half bathroom. We just call a toilet a toilet. And a bathroom upstairs. And they never move. They might have five children with three boys in one room and two girls in the other, but they don't move and they don't upgrade. So the great thing about frugal living, if you found a car, a reasonable priced car that does the job for you, and you like that size of car when you earn more money, you don't actually need a bigger car. Now here's, here is an example. Mike and I, for many years, we've always had one car. Now we're in a situation now where I would really like to have my own little car, but I just don't need it. It would be lifestyle creep. I would think to myself, well, I can afford to insure it. I can afford to run it. Yes, but then I wouldn't have the money to save. I would be living to my means, not under my means. So we don't need to upgrade. We don't need to have a bigger house. 
We don't need to live in a fancier postcode. We don't need to shop in a more expensive supermarket. We don't need to upgrade. Frugal living is okay. We're making our own choices. It's all okay. So don't succumb to the lifestyle creep just because you earn more money. Now my final section and my heartfelt message to all of you is life is not a competition. Now, I'm starting with this bit in this section. Some people don't understand frugality and they don't understand why Auntie Beryl has had the same dining room suite and the same cur curtains and the same rug and the same sofa for 50 or 60 years. They don't understand it. And I'll tell you why Auntie Beryl has done this, because she likes that. She doesn't need to change it, it suits her fine. Frugal living, individuality and personal choice go hand in hand. So it's not a competition. You don't have to keep up with the Joneses. You don't have to keep up with your friends. You do not have to keep up with your colleagues. You'll notice week in, week out, I wear my hair the same way. I wear the same glasses, I'm wearing the same clothes. And do you know why? Because I like them, it's my choice, and I'm happy with it. So, as I've said to you, my final message to you, and it's a heartfelt message to all of you, and I really hope you take this away with you today, it's not a competition. You do not have to keep up with the Joneses. You can have the same furniture for the rest of your life, and if you're happy with it, stick with it. So there was our beginner's guide to frugal living and how to save more money. Who knows, you may be doing all of those and more beside. However, some of those might be new to you and you might want to try them. You may be somebody who's written a budget in the past but not stuck to it, but come back to it. It's time to start is always today. You may be somebody in the past you tried meal planning but you dropped it and you want to get back into it. So I hope that you found some of those tips and hints helpful and encouraging. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I thank you to absolutely everybody who watches. We would really really appreciate it if you would like the video and we would ask everybody if you're not a subscriber would you consider being a subscriber? It costs you nothing, I promise you. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any of our videos. So everybody, we'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.